fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere on the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Oy! The huge gates of territorial prison swung open, and the guard bid goodbye to the big, rough-looking man who stood gazing out at the broad sweep of prairie that meant fresh air and freedom. All right, Lawson, this is it. So long. So long. Spike Lawson stopped and turned. For one long moment, he stared at the building he had just left after two long years. Then, with a scowl on his face, he swung away and walked determinedly toward a man who waited with two horses a short distance away. Hi, Pete. I knew you'd be waiting. Howdy, Spike. Good to have you free again. Yeah, thanks. Mm. Nice bronc you brought for me. Steady, fellow. Let's get away from here. Sure. Get up. Get up. How's my kid doing, Pete? Fine, Spike, fine. Getting so big, you'll hardly recognize him. Sure was nice of you to take care of him while it was doing time. I think nothing of it. Jack hasn't been much trouble. Sort of the kind of kid that looks after himself. He's tough as all get out, too. Tough? Yeah. Like I said, Jack's big for a boy of 15. He's got all the other kids around the town of Jason toeing the mark, I can tell you. <laughs> ah, if you get started with your gang again, Jack will sure make a good extra hand, Spike. I was hoping the kid would turn out different from me, sort of. What do you mean, different? Well, maybe amount to something, instead of being an outlaw like his old man. <laughs> well, after all, Jack ought to have something to say about what he wants to be. But from what I see, he's going to be just like his old man. Yep, that kid's a natural to be a gun-slinging owl who, just like you, Spike... Late that night, Jack Lawson, Spike's 15-year-old son, entered the cabin on the edge of Jason. Jack stood for a moment near the door, staring at the man who sat at the table playing cards with Pete. Then he approached them enthusiastically. Pop! Well, golly, Pete didn't tell me you were getting out today. I thought I'd surprise you, kid. Well, you sure surprised me, all right. Aren't you going to say anything to the kid, Spike? Yeah, Pop, what's the matter? Why are you staring at me like that? 
Where are you bent this hour, Jack? Oh, uptown with a few fellas. We have a little gang. I'm the leader, too. A gang, huh? And staying out till all hours, too. Look, kid. I don't like it at all. But you're leader of a gang, won't you, Pop? Why can't I be? Take a close look at me, kid. See what two years of hard labor did to your old man. You want to end up in territorial? Or at the end of a rope, maybe? But gosh, Pop, if you can take the chance, I can. Oh, gee, it's good to have you home. If you get your gang started again, maybe you'll let... Get out of here. Go on. Get before I... Hey, hey, Pop, please let go. You're choking me. <laughs> well, I... I'm crazy a bit, I guess. I... Sorry, kid. Go on to bed. Go on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, Pop. Good night. You shouldn't have grabbed him that way, Spike. What do you want to scare the daylights out of the kid for? The first time he sees you in two years. Uh, what's the use? Sit down, Pete. We'll finish this game. The following afternoon, Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger rode to the general store in Jason on his horse, Victor. Leading the beautiful white stallion at the hitch rack, Dan went in to get supplies. A few minutes later, Jack Lawson and one of his cronies sauntered over and stood admiring the horse. Hey, bud, look at that horse. He sure is a beaut. Yeah, I'd sure like to have one like that. I noticed the kid that rode him into town. He, he wasn't very big. He sure didn't look very tough either. Yeah, I noticed him, too. Well, I hope he isn't in a hurry to get away from town. Why? Because I'm going to ride around a bit on that stallion, that's why. Maybe he won't let you, Jack. <laughs> you loco. How's he going to stop me if I decide to do it? I guess he can't, seeing as you're the toughest kid in town. I'm going to mind him and get going right now. Uh, hold still, you on the side, won't you? Watch out, Jack. I'll trample you. He's looking mean. No horse will ever trample me. Once I get on him, he'll be sorry for acting up. Hold there, now, hold still. Get around there. Hey, me. what are you trying to do? Easy, Victor. Steady, fellow. Easy. Well, well. So you don't like what I'm trying to do, huh, kid? This is my horse. You have no right to bother him. Oh, you get that, Jack. It's his horse, so you mustn't bother him. I decide to ride that horse a while, see? And whether you like it or not, I'm going to do it. You better watch out, kid. This is Jack Lawson, the toughest kid in town. He's bigger than you, and if he gets real yeah. mad... I think I am getting mad, too. I'm the one who should get mad. Just let my horse alone, and we'll have no trouble. I'm going to ride that horse. But before I do, kid, I'm going to beat the living daylights out of you. Now, stand back, bud. There's no reason for us to fight, Lawson. <laughs> he's trying to big off now, Jack. Well, he's not getting out of it that easy. This will show him. Hey, you're forcing me to do this. <laughs> Why, you little... I'll show you Dan Reed had been taught to fight well, but the Lone Ranger had also taught him to use his knowledge only in self-defense. As he faced the larger boy, Dan easily parried the blows that Jack Lawson threw at him, and in return made every blow of his own a telling one. At first, Jack seemed to have the advantage of brute force, but as the fight progressed and Dan landed slow after blow, the ugly look on Jack's face turned to one of amazement. I'll fix you yet. I don't think you will. Holy Moses, what a sock. Hit him, Jack. I'll hit him all right. Oh, oh, that dead hurt. Well, take this one. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Wait. You want to go on? Get up, Lawson. Get up, Jack. Before he jumps on you. I'll wait. No. No, I've had enough. Don't hit me. Here. Let me help you out. Now, look, wait. I, I don't want to fight anymore. I don't either, Lawson. I defend myself. I couldn't let you take my horse. Well, you... You mean you're not going to follow up your advantage? Let's forget it, shall we, Jack? Well, what do you know about that? Jack would have kicked the stuffing out of you if he got you down, kid. I don't fight that way. Well, when I tell the other kids about this, I bet they'd agree to have you for our leader instead of Jack. Thanks, but I don't go in for gangs. It only leads to trouble and jail or, or worse. Golly, kid, I, I never met anyone like you before. What's your name? Dan Reed. I know yours is Jack Lawson. Yeah, that's right. I had the reputation of being the toughest kid in town, but I guess being now... Tough doesn't get you anywhere, Jack. Just gets other people down on you. Who told you all that sort of stuff, Dan? A friend of mine. Yeah. Same one who gave me the horse and who taught me how to fight and shoot and ride well. Look, Jack, I'm leaving. I'll see you later. 
Go on. He's going to tell the gang about the beating you gave me. You're a good fighter. Well, that is, you could be if you knew a few of the rules and fought fair. You know, I, I never had a real friend, but if I ever had the chance to have, I think someone like you would be just we the can one. We friends if you like, Jack. How about it? Oh, gosh, sure. Let's shake on it. All right. I better be getting along now. Uh, maybe I'll see you next time I come to town. Steady, boy. Easy, come on. So long, Jack. If anybody ever tries to pick on you, Dan, just let me know. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. Come on, Victor. Leaving the town of Jason, Dan Reed rode into the nearby hills to the camp he shared with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Dan told them about his encounter with Jack Lawson. <laughs> I noticed the slight discoloration around your left eye, Dan. <laughs> well, Jack's a hard hitter. He's big for his age, but he doesn't know how to handle himself in a fight. Well, from what you tell us, Dan, him not want to pick on you again. Oh, no, Tom. No. We made up and became friends. Jack could be a nice fellow if he tried. I know of his father, Dan. Oh, you do? Yes. In fact, that's one reason why we came here to Jason. See, Jack's father was an outlaw. Went to prison, but he recently got out and came to Jason. I understand his gang is still waiting for him. Golly, no wonder Jack acts so tough. Mm, that's right. It's not good for Jack to follow Father's footsteps and be outlaw. There's no reason why he should, Tonto. Then, why don't you bring Jack out here to the camp a day or two? Maybe we could change a few of his ideas. Oh, gosh, I'd like to. All right, then. Bring him out tomorrow. Let's prepare supper, Tonto. Next day, Dan rode into Jason and found Jack. Then the two boys set out for the Lone Ranger's camp. Within a short time, they reined up and dismounted. Oh, 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 oh steady, Bob. Oh, easy, boy. Hey. This is camp where I stay with my friends, Jack. Hello, Dan. Jumping catfish, a masked outlaw. Well, Dan, why didn't you tell me you were seeing... Well, he isn't an outlaw, Jack, honest. That's right, Jack, I'm not. So just forget the mask. I'm glad Dan brought you out to see us. Well, thanks. Come along and meet Tonto. Hey, Dan, a man who wears a mask, he must be an outlaw. Now, tell me, who is he? Take my word for it, Jack, he isn't an outlaw. After you've been around a few days and he gets to know you better, I'm sure he'll tell you why he wears a mask and all. Well, all right, then, but uh, I'm still curious. How? Oh. Gosh. <laughs> Dan, tell us about you, Jack. An Indian. Tonto's our best friend, Jack. Not right. Suppose we all take a short ride, Dan. You can ride Jack's bronc, and he can ride Victor if you want him to. Sure. Would you like to, Jack? Oh, golly, yeah. Fine. When we get back, Tonto and I will give Jack a few of the pointers we gave you, Dan, on fighting to defend yourself. All right, let's get the horses. For several days, Jack visited the camp and learned much from the Lone Ranger and Tonto about shooting, riding, and boxing. Though he was still somewhat dubious about the mask, the kindness and patience of the Lone Ranger made Jack think of him with awe and wonderment. No one had ever been so understanding, and the thing that struck Jack most was the wonderful relationship that existed between Dan and the two men. His feeling of friendship for Dan grew strong, and his admiration for the Lone Ranger was boundless. Not knowing that they knew about his father, Jack hadn't mentioned him, and as the days went by, he felt disgraced to think his father was an outlaw. One night when he returned home, his father was not there, but Pete was waiting. Hello, kid. I've been waiting for you. Waiting for me? Why, Pete? Well, I finally convinced your old man. What, what do you mean? Look, Spike's at the gang's hideout right now. I'm to bring you there. In a couple of nights, we're going to pull the first job he's planned since he come back... And he's going to let you help. <laughs> ah, from then on, kid, you'll be a full-fledged outlaw. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Arriving home, Jack found Pete waiting for him. Pete told him they were to go to his father at the gang's hideout and that Jack was to take part in a job that would make him a full-fledged outlaw. For a moment, Jack stared at Pete without speaking. Then the boy gave voice to a thought that raced through his mind. You know, Pete, I always hoped Pop would let me join up with the gang someday. Sure, I knew you were hoping that kid. Being big for your age, the time's come when he's going to let you. But now I've changed my mind, Pete. I don't want to be an outlaw at all. What? What's come over you, Jack? Uh, I don't know exactly, but... Well, you can tell Pop I don't want to help on that job. But it's all planned out, kid, and we need a boy to put it over. You can't back out now. I'm not going with you, Pete. Just tell Pop I said I've changed my mind about things. Look, Jack, Spike said to bring you out there, and that's what I aim to do. Hey. This says you're coming with me. Don't point that gun at me. As long as I told you we were going to pull a job, I can't go without you. Now get going and no more back talk out of you, understand? Get going. Pete and Jack rode up to the shack where Spike was waiting for them. Oh, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Go on inside. All right, Pete. There he is, Spike. Hey, hey. Got you the gun, Pete. Hey, Pop. He pulled a gun on me, made me come out of here when I didn't want to. Put up that gun, Pete. Sure. But I don't like the kid's attitude, Spike. He seems to have gone soft or something. What's the matter with you, son? I told Pete I didn't want to come. I don't want to be an outlaw. You don't? And what do you want to be? A lawman. What? Someday. Holy smoke. Lord. Yes, sir. Well, what's come over you, son? And what you just said, then, you called me sir. You never did that before. I, I heard someone say that boys should say that to, to their fathers. And look, Papa, I won't tell anything. Why can't I go back home and... No. You know too much, kid. Now that you say you want to be a lawman someday, well, that fixes it. Look, Pete, why don't you go outside and join the others a while? Let me talk things over with Jack and get things straightened out. All right, Spike. But I'm telling you one thing. That kid isn't getting away from here. Me and the others will see to that. There's something funny about his change of ideas that I don't like. See you later. <laughs> Two days went by, and Jack failed to appear at the camp. One day, after Tonto had gone for supplies into town, Dan spoke of his concern to the Lone Ranger. Golly, I wonder what happened to Jack Lawson. He hasn't come around for the past two days. Yes, I noticed that, Dan. Perhaps Jack's decided he's seen enough of us for the time being. Oh, no, sir, I'm sure it isn't that. Jack said the last time he was here that he couldn't wait to get back with us. Well, then it is strange that he hasn't shown up. I guess he'll be around before the week is out. Gosh, I hope so. Well, I sort of got to like Jack, and well, I wouldn't want anything to happen that would make him change his mind about not being an outlaw. Did Jack say he didn't want to be an outlaw? No, not exactly. But he did say he hoped to be a lawman someday. He, he never mentioned his father. Yes, I know. Well, here comes Toto. Oh, Scott, oh, he came back sooner oh, than I thought he would. Yes, he did. Uh, we hear something in town, King and it's not good. What did you hear, Toto? Did you see anything uh, of Jack Lawson, Toto? Wait, Dan, wait. You listen. Go on, Toto. Well, me go to town, rain up at Hitchrack. Me see boys standing nearby. There's other fellow rain up beside me. Oh, he's got hold on. Easy. Oh, hold it. Hold Easy, boy. Hey, mister. What's happened to Jack? He hasn't been around lately. Ah, uh, how do I know? Go on, beat it, kid. But he's living at your cabin. You ought to know. I said beat it. Jack's got more to do than to hang around with you. Hmm. Him go into cafe. And me follow. Maybe find out about Jack. You wait here, Scout. May not be gone long. So you followed the man into the cafe, Tonto? Not right. What did you find out? Well, him go to table in corner. Yes. Meet other fellow. Me get close to listen and hear what them talk about. I was hoping I'd find you waiting, Bill. Just come from the camp. Is everything set, Pete? Yeah, it's all set. How are we going to work it? The stage will leave here in the morning carrying the shipment of gold. Yeah, I know that. There'll be a guard on it, too. That won't matter. Now, here's the plan we got. We've managed to get hold of a covered wagon. 
The gang will be hid inside. But on the wagon seat will be Lawson's kid with Spike dressed like a pioneer sitting beside him. Then what? We'll start out so as to meet the stage a few miles east of here on the trail. Hey, that's a good plan. Sure, they won't suspect a thing when they see a covered wagon coming along slow with a kid on the seat. <laughs> Spike will wave down the stage as if to ask directions. Then the gang will take over. Good. And what am I to do? You hang around town tonight and make sure the shipment's still leaving. You can find out easy enough. Sure, I can find out. Good. And come on out just to help us. We had a little trouble at camp, but it's under control. Trouble? Ah, it's nothing. Me and the man got it smoothed out. I'll be getting back, Bill. I'll be looking for you later at camp. So, a man named Pete, leave cafe. Me come to tell you about Outlaw's plan. I see. It's a very clever plan. I can't believe Jack could do a thing like that. Help the outlaw gang in a holdup. Yes, I know how you feel about it, Dan. And what we do, Kimasabi? Naturally, we're going to prevent that holdup if possible, Tonto, and catch the Lawson gang. But what about Jack? If the gang is caught, A he'll... good citizen has to do his duty, Dan, no matter who's involved. That's a lesson you'll have to learn if you ever hope to be a lawman. All right, Tonto. I'll get a note ready for you to take to the sheriff. Ah. The following morning, along the trail east of Jason, a covered wagon moved along slowly. Inside were several tough-looking men, while on the driver's seat, Spike Lawson, dressed as a pioneer, sat beside his son, Jack. In the wagon, just behind the seat, Pete kneels with a gun in his hand. You ought to be meeting the stage most any time now, Spike. Tell that kid of yours, if he don't act right when we do meet it, I'll put a bullet in each of you. Listen here, Pete. You and the gang took my gun away. Or you wouldn't make threats like that. Sure, we couldn't let you stick up for the kid like you wanted to. You'll both get your share if the holdup goes over all right. I don't want any of it. Look, Pete, let Jack get off the wagon. Beat it. I'll follow through with the plan. There's nothing to him. When they see a kid sitting on the wagon seat, they won't be suspicious. If you was there alone, they might smell a trap. Hey, there comes a stage now around the bend yonder. That's right. Get ready, men. Right, Pete. Now, don't forget, kid. One false move and you get it right in the back. When we get close enough, just about to pass him, call out in a nice way for him to stop a minute, understand? I understand. Golly, Pop. I know, kid. Take it easy. Stop the wagon, Spike. Oh! Oh, there! Oh! Hail him, kid. Call out to him. Keep going! Don't stop! It's a hold up! Why, you said it! Don't! Don't! Oh! Oh! Pulling alongside the covered wagon, the stage suddenly stopped and the coach door opened. The lone ranger with the sheriff and Tonto sprang out and ran close to the wagon side. Watch out! The wagon's full of outlaws! Just check. Come off the wagon. Hey, you won't, kid. Look out! Down my wrist! Hearing the order from the masked man, Jack jumped to the ground and ran to join the group alongside the wagon. The driver and guard on the boot of the stage had jumped behind a large box on top. From this vantage point, they rained bullets through the top of the wagon canvas while the Lone Ranger, the Sheriff, and Tonto moved toward the opening at the back. Crouch down under the wagon, Jack. Follow the way. Come on, Tonto. Uh -huh. We get them from back. They can't get away now. All right in there. Drop your guns and call out. They'll get you first. Oh, you won't. No. Don't get hit. Never mind. Keep shooting. You'd better give up. Nothing doing. You can't make us give up. Let them have it, men. They must have a dozen men out there. We give up. Hold your fire. Drop our gun. Give us a chance to come out. All right. Come out with your hands up. Right. That seems to be all of them. Pop's in there. Pete was going to shoot me for one of you, but Pop jumped him and got shot. Easy, easy, Jack. We'll bring your father out here. Come on, fellow. Uh, watch the other, Sheriff. I sure will. The driver's guard up there in the booth still have drawn guns, too. We got them covered. Pete and Lawson are both still inside, wounded. We'll get them out of the wagon. Ah, uh, me coming to help. A short time later, Dan Reed, who had followed the stage a short distance behind, leading Silver and Scout, arrived on the scene. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. There, Dan, the horses keep Oh, Dan, back. gosh, I'm glad you came. My pop, he shot. We're trying to help him, Jack. No use, mister. I'm a goner. No, pop, no. I don't think it's so hard, son. It's the best way. Easy, fella. Easy now, easy. Jack told me about you and that boy... You didn't want to come along. Beat. Beat. Yes, we know. 
We heard Jack's warning and saw what you did to save his life. Jack proved himself in a big way, Spike. You won't have to worry about him. Maybe. Maybe someday he can be a lawman. Not an outlaw. Like me. Oh, Bob. Oh. It's all right, son. All right. He'll make a fine lawman, Spike. I'm sure of that. Oh, I, I'm glad. And it's because of you and, and that boy, Dan. Jack, son, I... I... Bob. 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 Come on, Jack. Come on. Go back with us. Sheriff, we'll see you later to make arrangements for the funeral. Sure. I'll take these prisoners back in the stagecoach and attend the spike. Uh, you can ride on Victor with me, Jack. Come along, then. Adios, Sheriff. Adios. Easy, steady, Victor. One, two, three. Come on, Victor. Gosh, I can't save it why I lost this kid and want to be a lawman. There's lots of local hombres like you don't savvy, mister. If we had more understanding for kids like that, we wouldn't have so many growing up to fill the prisons. The Lone Ranger gave Lawson's boy that kind of understanding. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>